Hello, I am Super Orange Cat. Here I'm today with some with my list of the top five worst things to happen to Tanami in 2019. But first, I have to make a brief news update. Fire Force did just get announced for season two. It's not immediately being announced for Tanami, but it is kind of assumed, considering Tanami's penchant for getting shows that have previously aired, that when season two of Fire Force is ready, it will air on the block. Which I'm kind of surprised because of the shows that are in the first half of the block. I thought that was this show was probably the lowest odds of getting another season, especially considering its Blu ray sales have been very abysmal in Japan. Like, lower than the two fully cooling spinoffs, which is pretty impressive considering how absolutely no one is considering that a success these days. But again, Fire Force will get a season two. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in the future. And now without further ado, my list of the top five worst things to happen in Tanami in 2019. The fifth worst thing, kind of tying to what I just said, was Fire Force coming to the block. Now, I know a lot of people do like this show, so I'm not just going to grandstand here and say everyone hates it. It's a horrible show, because I can see how people do come to like this show. Unlike a show I'm going to mention later, stay tuned on that. It's just the fact that it felt like someone decided to mix a shonen with fan service because they're like, okay, shonen is always a tried and true method. It will always find a way to work. Case in point, you have Demon Slayer this year be a sh almost a pure base shonen, do extremely well, of course, as I've mentioned in previous videos before. So, Let's take that tried and true method, and we know that this etchy, this fan service is becoming this bigger and bigger trend in Japan. So how about we take the two and put them together and see what happens? What you get is Fire Force. And it's like one of these things where it's like, you have this like hero's journey arc with Shinra, with like kind of trying to get past the shadow of him being accused of killing his mom. And you have this really good idea for an arc, but... The fan service gets in the way. And this is kind of strange for me to believe, considering I am actually a fan of the concept of fan service in anime. But, like, when all of a sudden it's like, I need to avenge my own, my own, like, reputation because everyone still thinks I killed my mom. And it's like, uh-oh, nip slip. You know, you have all these things, and it just kills the pacing of it. And also, it just undercuts all the seriousness that the show could have. And for Tanami to pick this up, I forget if this was before or after Food Wars. Food Wars being far and away the weirdest pickup, although it stays off this list because it's it it's upfront about what it is and it's honest to you and it actually finds a way to make it work at times. So it stays off this list. But again, Fire Force just never took off for me in a way it probably should have. But again, it's number five on my list, not any worse, because I can definitely see how people like this show. So it stays here. Now the number four worst thing about the block this year was just all the disservice that Tanami gave Hunter Hunter for the most part. Like, you have some of the most biggest episodes of the entire series going on at 3.30. Like, that just seems weird, because I distinctly remember having to... DVR the Gone versus Pito fight episode at 3 30, and I can only get around and watch it like Tuesday at like 8 p.m. And I I, I, I didn't know at that time, I didn't know what happened specifically because I haven't. I, I That was kind of my first experience with the Command Ant arc was just watching it on the anime. I saved myself for that. But, and then just being so angry when I saw in like RT9 the next day, someone do a spoil post like, oh, Pito died. Whoops. Which kind of disappoints me because she is best cat, ant girl, but whatever, you know. So, I was kind of disappointed by that. But again, it stays kind of low on this list because they did do it right by letting the fans vote on what episode to see one more time. And of course, they chose. This is not hyperbole. Hyperbole. When I say, I like one of the most heart wrenching episodes of any show ever the Komogi and. Meruem episode. I think it was episode number 135. It's about a 90% shot you're going to cry watching it. Like, it's hard to avoid crying watching it because it felt so genuine. It felt so real. 
which is absolutely amazing considering Merriam having built up to be this complete inhumane monster for the entire arc. So it was just amazing how the show absolutely finished. And again, it was just so disappointing that it, it got the late night treatment. It got the nightcap treatment airing right alongside whatever rerun of like Attack on Titan was on at the time or something. But again, it's only four because Tommy did realize that mistake and give a little bit to the fans at the end there. Number three, this one deserves a little context. It was the quote-unquote I call this year's April Fool's prank from Tanami. It, it was unfortunately not an intended prank. What happened was that on April Fool's Day, April 1st, we got a new schedule for Tanami, And it was bad. Like, bad? I have never seen so many Tanami fans unite for any single thing other than just going out and saying how bad the schedule was. The My Hero Academia fans said it was bad. The JoJo fans said it was bad. The people that were hanging on to the Promised Neverland, which is the group I was in, thought it was bad. Because, it like, I have to describe the schedule to you for to understand how bad it was. Naturally, Dragon Ball Super is the first show. So far, so good, but any anyone who had a brain would put that lead off. Then you had Alicization go up second at 11.30. Alicization, which really never got good ratings. It was just kind of bit kind of there because the first two Sword on lines were there. Not that many people really liked it in particular. Like I think the reception for Alicization was better than the first two parts, but oh boy. <laughs> Why put this after Super? You have the Promise Neverland which is coming towards its end. You had Boruto which had become a fan favorite. You had Hunter Hunter which was going to the their best episodes of the series. You had Diamond is Unbreakable that had a diehard fan base. Why Alicization? And also, other than that, like, some other notables was new episodes of My Hero Academia airing at 1 in the morning, JoJo being shafted at 3 a.m., which is pretty impressive because as bad as Hunter Hunter got it, this was in an even worse spot than Hunter Hunter had been put in. And also, just Boruto, a show which we've seen in the past do pretty well when put, put after Super, it pushed to 130 and paired with his dad, Naruto. And again, it's number three. This would have been like number one or two if it wasn't for the fact that the show that blocked a couple days later did put out a new schedule that was much better. I forgot, I want to say they ended up putting Boruto back in the second spot. They put Diamonds and Breakle back early. Actually, I think My Hero Academia got the second spot. And then Alicization got thrown back. I think Promise Neverland stayed at midnight. And Black Clover. Kind of, that was the only fan base I actually liked this schedule was Black Clover. That was because it was put in the best slot it had been in a year. Like a year. But again, it got shafted back to like 2 in the morning, I think, with the schedule ended up happening for April 13, 2019. But again, they did rectify this mistake, so it's only number 3. But the next two things were very bad. And ultimately a good year for Tanami. Number 2 is kind of more of an omnibus pick. It was just all the censorship we got this year. <laughs> the show that probably got the most shafted in terms of the number of times was Food Wars. If you know anything about Food Wars, you know exactly what probably got censored. There's a lot of quote-unquote foodgasm scenes, people reacting sexually to eating food, and a lot of those sequences got really cut. A lot of invisible light bars got put in places. And you can talk about just like, I don't want to see this on TV, but it's one in the morning. I mean, look, if, if six-year-old is watching at one in the morning, it's not Locke's fault they're watching anything that they shouldn't be seeing. It's the parents' fault that the kid's up at one in the morning. And again, just like, I, I know it's tied on technically to Cartoon Network, but it's probably the thinnest of tethers. And you could just, like, standards of practices division should know it's at one in the morning, Everyone watching this is at least, like, 14, 15. I think a 14-year-old can handle the concept of a woman's breasts. I just think that's just a natural thing. And they can know, they know what sex is, okay? They they found their dad's stash when they're younger, probably, or something, you know? And again, uh, it's like, same time, Fire Force kind of had a scene or two cut for the similar reasons, and as much as I dislike how that show used fan service, it didn't deserve that cut. 
And of course, probably the closest thing to a rational cut was the whole seizure-inducing issues with Dragon Ball Super. Tournament of Power arc had a lot of fights that were very fast-paced. If you know anything about the show, you know that everything is OP in that show by nature. So they were, like, super fast-punching. He had bright flashing lights. Tanami actually went, I think, and changed the animation to make the flashing lights be a lot slower. And also, you had the whole idea of them putting a warning in front to say, hey, you might get seizures if you have epile epileptic issues. Which, if they just did that and didn't really play around the animation, then I think that would have been the smarter option. It just seems insulting to the fan base when you go out of your way to make these edits. The single most edit I disagreed with with Toonami in 2019 was the edits to the 10th episode of Sword Online Alice's Station. If you followed Sword Online in the past, you'll know the show has a really weird tendency to throw in rape scenes. Like, in the first two, were very notorious for being so out of place and not necessary to the part where it's just kind of offensive. But the third one, I like... I don't want to give the context because it would take a long time for me to describe the context into the scene, except for this rape made sense to the plot, and it was very well structured, with one exception being one of the rapists doing a loop on dive onto the bed, which, kind of like what I mentioned with Fire Force, you had this serious scene, which had been set up so well, and then you throw in this weird gag that really just takes the darkness away from that scene. Like, and a lot of people online were like, oh, it's a scary concept, triggering concept. I'm like, yeah, but it's rape. It's supposed to be unsettling. If you make media and you have a rape scene and it's unsettling and hard to look at, odds are you did a good job with it because that's the point. Rape is unsettling. Rape is a bad thing. And what Tsunami did was they cut it any further than any previous cut of the scene had been because Japan did cut some stuff from it. Which, if Japan is cutting something that's sexual, then that had to, that's, that's notable on its own because Japan rarely does that. Which I can understand to a point, but Tanami cut an additional like 50 seconds of the scene out, which really awkwardly messed up the timing for the rest of the block. So the shows were actually like a minute to two off for the rest of the block because of this cut, which did take, I think, did take away some of the artistic integrity of the scene. Especially considering how it was this very crucial moment for Yu-Gi-Oh! and in his character development. And in, a character in Yu-Gi-Oh! which I could point to and say a bunch of bad things about how poorly he was done as a character. That was one of the few really poignant, great moments he actually had. And I feel like in a way, Tanami kind of took that away from him with this extended cut. And again, okay, I'm going to step off my soapbox now. And there was one thing that I thought was just more insulting to the viewer, that I thought was just so painful and so horrible decision Tommy made this year. And if you followed me, if you've watched my videos throughout this year, you will know what number one is a million miles away. Why did we have Genlock? Like, okay, Genlock, it's a Rooster Teeth show. If you don't, don't know what Rooster Teeth is, it's this, like, online service. It kind of is trying to be, like, this own mini anime crunchy, like, American animation crunchy roll thing. And they had a storied past. If you've followed them in the past, they've had pretty decent shows, like Red vs. Blue. They've had Ruby. Well, the first couple seasons were good. Ruby now is just a complete train wreck. But... And Rooster Teeth, though, has kind of gained this notoriety for being fake anime, which, and especially one thing to note is, oh, I'm not going to say one thing to note. I'm going to say everything I thought was just bad about the show, and I'm just going to file them off quickly. One, animation sucked. Two, horrible use of all the voice acting talent. Three, they killed off the one decent character in Dave Tennant's character. I forgot his name already. Or you have a love story that makes no sense. Yes, and actually, it's probably the first time in history Twilight had a better love story than something. Five, I never liked the main character, Chase. Six, I had no idea what they were trying to fight the whole time. They kept that too ambiguous. 
seven. For some reason, we decided to give the America decided to give the show a second season. Middle it's gonna be an HBO Max four on the Rooster Teeth thing. Eight. If you look at the financial history of Rooster Teeth, he can put out many different things that they've had issues with. But I think Genlock was the sh was the straw on the camel's back that broke Rooster Teeth. He can point out like, oh, Rooster Teeth still exists, but it is very well known they're having financial issues. They had this whole controversy with not paying their workers. And I'm not going to go into all the death about the all the politics they talk about a lot. Yeah, but again, and also the whole concept of allegedly this was given to Tanami for free since it is a Time Warner. Time Warner owns Rooster Teeth and also owns Art Network and Adult Swim. So the licensing free fee was gratis. It was free. But at the same time, it really makes Rooster Teeth even look worse because it feels like they had to find some way to advertise a show that shouldn't need to be advertised. Because you've had this whole promotion for it to be like this big Rooster Teeth, this is Rooster Teeth's coming out party. This is when they become the next Frenchie Roll. This is when they become the next Funimation. But for it to flop in their face like it did, for them to have these massive financial issues they have now, and the fact that for some reason they were able to get Toonami to air this. So, so uncharacteristic for the block. Like, the person's like, Toonami should only be anime. American show shouldn't be here. I mean, this show, this block had Symbionic Night not that long ago, which I actually really loved at the time. It's just the fact that this doesn't mesh well with the block. Like, you can throw up My Hero Academia and compare it to some like Symbionic Titan perfectly. You can go back, back and it would mesh wealthy together. Genlock was this very Americanized fake Gundam show, and you're putting it next to like a My Hero Academia, putting it next to Dragon Ball. These shows, like even Dragon Ball and My Hero Academia kind of overlap, kind of have a similar feel at points. None of those, nothing on the block can mesh well with Genlock. And it would just and also just the fact that it was just a bad show. And I've listed just moments ago listed all the reasons why I hated it. Again, I'm gonna step off my other soapbox now and just say this was not a good decision. But ultimately, I'm just looking right now at like all the different show announcements we had in 2019, and we had much more good shows than bad shows. Like honestly, even in retrospect, I think me putting Fire Force at five might have been a little bit of a stretch because like I said. It wasn't painfully bad as a show. And again, I mean, this year, like I said, we had like Thomas Neverland. And let me pull up some of these other shows again that we had this year. Uh, signed out of that thing. But still, it was a very good year for Tanami. More shows were good than bad. I think the reception for the shows were good too. But again, these were just my opinion for some of the lowest moments of Tanami. I feel like the lowest moments for Tommy were for you. List them down below. I love reading your opinions. If you like this content from or Tommy new content, please like and subscribe. Please hit the notification button. I am Super Orange Cat, and that is all.